3,000. Um, we're back. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> we're back with some refreshments. <laughs> so where are we up to now? So you're about 2006? About, yeah, about 2005, 2006. Yeah, this is where we're at now. Um, and so, yeah, so doing the open mic thing, um, building, you know, just building relationships with the, you know, like, like-minded people, mm-hmm. seeing, uh, seeing this, um, explosion of, like, seeing, seeing the underground, like, kind of really kind of break ground and start to really kind of, it's, it's becoming, a um, a realistic thing like you know it's like it's you know for some people it was like always you know okay this is what we do but then for some it's just like oh wow you can do that mm-hmm. and the you know the opportunities are there like you know the digital that digital revolution digital music revolution really that like has exploded a lot of careers like you know that's the beginnings of that and success so, started happening from that underground stuff. yeah yeah you know like really <laughs> you know, like real, like a, a real, like um, s- uh, s- stream of revenue, you know, like an establishment of um, career, you know, like people who've gone, like, you know, started as rappers and, you know, maybe became lawyers or became venue owners, became, um, you know, like business, you know, it's like doing whatever, fashion. Successful yeah, people. just, yeah, and people who are able to, you know, be yeah. self-employed, like, mm-hmm. you know, realistic, start families and be able to sustain that, you know, out of what's just come out of their heads. Like, you know, it's a beautiful thing. And so seeing all of that and then now, again, like, you know, kind of my, charting my thing of like, okay, cool. Just want to, you know, find a label, find you know like just a group of people who are really on that and and just build from there Mm -hmm. like you know um and so yeah met the pang crew um this is you know matt and must uh my dude uh exact i don't know if you ever heard exact like exact one um another ill rapper um he, he stepped away from music he doesn't do it anymore um who else there's yeah, like uh, Primer and Insight, uh, Retainer. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where, like, you know, because Retainer was part of that as well. Like, you know, it's like it's pretty much original Pang yep. uh, member <clears throat> with all the, the TDA crew, all the, yeah, like all of that. Um, Retainer, uh, was it Machi. There's, yeah, so many people, like, you know, and seeing how... Um, Matt and Musk kind of, you know, kind of corralled and, you know, like we're able to, you know, build a compilation out of that and then the shows are happening and then, you know, it's like there's, you know, the um, solidarity and just, you know, everyone's like, you know, really inclusive. Like I felt like um, that was not that no one else was doing it, but I felt like that was the most really inclusive crew out of all the ones that I kind of come across and was like, you know, they're still kind of, yeah, it was really family and like, you know, really open, like open home kind of thing. Whereas certain crews, like, you know, it's like, you know, to their credit, like, you know, kept it close and, you know, were able to, you know, like do their thing and like, you know, kind of become legends, you know, but it didn't have that kind of, you know, the same, you know, the mindset where I was coming into that I explained. It's just like, yo, it's just like, it's for all of us. Mm -hmm. If I know, we know. If I do, the benefits is ours. Like, you know, if I, you know, it's like, if I fuck fuck it up, I take accountability and I'll own that. Mm -hmm. But then when we win, it's ours. Like, you know, I share that, like, you know, and so seeing that kind of as the basis of how how they moved, like, it was just like, yeah, okay. This is just where I'm at, <laughs> you know. And so, so now you've found your home, you can really start to like focus on growing yourself as an artist as that's well. That's right, yeah. And because it's like that's what the environment is like, you know. It's like we can, you know, oh, I've got this idea. What do you think? And really, you know, learn how to flesh, you know, learning how to flesh out an idea is like, you know, you can have a great idea if you can't execute it. It's just a great idea, yep. <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, so just really the beginnings and, you know, that was like kind of the starting point of, getting towards that and then um so yeah so the the roster at the time like so 2005 
2005. This is, you know, Dill Thomas is working on his album, the uh, Gunpowder Footstep album that came out, like I think that came out 2006 is when that had come out. But me and him, we're kind of hanging out. So all the beats that doesn't make it from or what he's working on like you know this and he's like prolific like this guy had just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of beats like still like he's probably gone easily i could easily say that that guy's like venturing into the kind of 10 plus thousand Crazy. instrumentals like yeah really prolific um producer um <clears throat> un unhampered by oh what if it doesn't work it's like just fucking do it, mm. you know, and that, I love, I love that, like, you know what I mean, like, there's no limits, there's no reason, you know, there's, like, no self-doubt of, like, oh, what if this doesn't, you know, it's, like, but that's the figure beauty. it out later, <laughs> you know, it's, like, of not having the major label stuff, because you're not worried about what's commercially popular, mm. you're just making what feels right, what feels right, yeah, and what's, like, what's also has its own lane, like, you know, because we're all, invested in it so we're fans of everything so we know what our si stuff sounds like next to other things that we really admire and what we really kind of feel inspired by you know mm. it's like and it was it, it it was the maybe that was like kind of the last fumes of um really distinctly trying to sound different to whatever was on the on the menu, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, as opposed to, it was kind of that, like just the turning over of that time where, oh, you want to be successful, do like that. Yep. You know, and there's- Because it was because it was Yeah, yeah it because was it was, and it was a very commercial aspect and a commercial um, thing. It's just like, oh, see, fish and chips is a popular food. Open a fish and chip shop. You know, that was kind of the thing. And then, you know, then the problem with that is then now, like, you go to a strip and there's three or four fish and chip shops next to each other, right? Like, and Saturate then it's the like, market. yeah, and then it's just, but then it's like, where's, like, then where's the actual delineation of I'm hungry as opposed to, oh, I can only eat at this homie's shop because if he sees me in the shop next door, like, you know, he might piss in my chips next time I come around. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's like... Piss and chips. Piss and <laughs> chips, you know? But that's the thing, because then it's, you know, oh, it's loyalty. Why, it's like, why are you supporting this guy? Like, I had the shop here first. Like, what? you know what I mean? Like, and there's... It's literally, that's what the art was turning into. It's like, yeah. well, I'm... This is my painting. You bit my painting and you get more famous than me off of my shit? What the fuck? Like, you know, it's like... Mm. It's all of those grumblings, whereas, like, in terms of the era of up to well, what I was as a fan then coming out of and like starting to dabble in was like, that was what you had to do. You couldn't sound like, so, oh, you, I mean, you have full license to sound however the fuck you want, but like, don't be surprised that you get compared to somebody else when it's like, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you are literally rapping on their beat. Of course, like you're going to be mistaken or then dismissed because it's like, I know whose song that is. That's not yours, you know? And so... Um, yeah, just that, um, kind of, it was, it, it was the mixtape culture, which again was very much, it's very similar to like my whole aesthetic when I started was like, just stick to writing. So it's like, of course, you're only going to be able to write to Jack Beats if you're not getting original ones, mm. you know? And so that's, <laughs> you know, and so you get caught in that, but then I didn't want that. I was like, nah, man, I want to. I know that there are people making original music. Where they at? Yeah, yeah. I want to make some new shit. Like, I'll, you know, even if it is in tribute to something that's been been done before, or like you know, it's purposely sounding this way to take you back to that moment. Mm -hmm. But then also jumping out of it and kind of showcasing what we've made in our moment. You know. So, so you're seeking out after the pain connections made. You start recording with them. Then you seek out other people making original content. And you start to grow as an artist. You're like looking for other people, like mm -hmm. you're making original, you start mm -hmm. to do more live shows. Where does it progress from there? Yeah, so from there then it was like, okay, I'm looking to be a part of that. Like, you know, as a, um, still in my A&R repertoire, like, you know, it's still 
thinking of like you know oh, okay where how do i develop the the business acumen if you will mm -hmm. around it so that that's you know it's like it's another kind of tool in the shed like where it's like oh okay take off the creative hat and understand oh, okay what's the accounting of this how does this work what's the logistics how do you get back distribution end. yeah all the back end stuff who do you speak to about distribution where you're getting the stuff manufactured what's the quality of the manufacturing that's what's the you know what i mean like what's the aesthetic you want to then push and then like what kind of paper are you choosing to print your stuff on what's the th this what's the font what's the you see like you know it's a, <clears throat> a limitless thing but it's like it's something that a lot of artists don't know and then get surprised when you get stung with the bill for that. Yeah. Because you opted or an inferior to inferior product because yeah, you, because you off yeah, that. you you like you kind of um yeah. you offshored the that work, you know? So it's like not you weren't in kind of discussions with someone about that and what you're trying to convey. You know, like the type of paper like that, you know, that can convey a certain aesthetic and a certain messaging. If you are intentionally wanting to be environmentally aware, like what kind of materials are you using that doesn't have such a large carbon footprint in terms of what you're going to produce and then have sitting in a shelf for fucking the next 20 years? Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we have to be realistic about shit sure. like that, you know? And so unless you really have that also in the line of thinking of like okay yeah cool we have this creative product but like what about all these other things that we have to mm. we have to consider those things as much as we consider the creative product otherwise it's just you know yeah. it's just but the dead in the think water about that a lot of the time and so you, and you know that the reason why is because they're worried about making art <laughs> oh well they should <laughs> but the problem is in this Especially with like very, um, what, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, I guess if you want to call it predatory. Like, you know, you, there's a thousand, probably clocking up to millions of stories of people who've been, you know, shady deals and, you know, like, oh, like, yeah, you don't worry. You just do the art and we'll take all your, I mean, we'll take care of all the other stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then they pay themselves for that. And, you know, it's like, and especially if then that's, you know, the, contractually, like this is a product that's or like a business endeavor that's under your name and you're the one, you're in the creditors list. Like, you know, it's like. Someone's got, everyone's getting a slice of the pie. Everyone's getting a slice. And if you don't know, like if you don't realize like, oh, fuck, we paid this guy 500 bucks just to suggest the color of sneakers that I'm wearing. Why? Yeah. I'm fucking, you know, I could do that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and then that can be offset on whatever cost 500 bucks in the other section. And, you know, it's like, and so having all of that kind of technical awareness so that when you are now in a business situation where you're speaking to a label and they're just saying all this jargon that you're just like, what? I don't understand sundry. What's sundry? Uh, what, or what is sundry expenses? It's like, oh, well, you know, like just the, the nuts and stuff that were at the gig that, you know, like people or whatever, you know, like all these mini miniature costs that like, you know, it's like it looks on, on a contract that's based on a like a one-off thing, right? Of course, like a thousand dollars kind of in the long scheme seems like a small amount but if then like you don't realize that that's every time you're doing something yeah. it adds up it adds the fuck up mm -hmm. even if you only do a show once a month but you're spending a thousand dollars on this certain thing that's 12 grand a year, yeah. a year and if you're not making that 12 grand back you have to get it from somewhere yeah. and it's the guy who you know what i mean and it's the, yeah <laughs> exactly you yeah. know what i mean so it's like, you know, those, those kinds of awarenesses and things like that is like stuff that, you know, I've realized like, you know, people are getting shorted on this shit. And then it's also because they're in business situations with people that they have no personal connections to. Mm -hmm. It's easy for me to fire you if I don't know where you live. Yep. It's easy for me you're to... A dis you're a number. And if the, this number is lower in cost than the number that you've got, your number is getting scratched off way quicker. Yeah, for sure. With no 
remorse or anything. It's like it's business, homie. Yeah. As opposed to someone who sees the fallout of what you lose out of a bad, a bad business situation yeah. will always opt for the better one. But in I, in your name and as a duty of care to really be like, yo, I can't leave this person, <laughs> you know, in the dark with no food just because someone decided that they don't rap to this beat nice. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. But that's why with the smaller labels and everything, you're not, you're everyone's, no one's going to be thinking like that. No, because w- and especially if you're doing the due diligence, mm. you know that you're not going to fucking clock t- 10 grand. Mm. You know you might spend eight to get a decent product and then hopefully you can try and like work towards recouping that eight Mm. because it's like the most realistic um especially for like small medium enterprise business like the most realistic figure that you should have on your balance sheet is zero at the end break even Break the fuck even. Is good. Is a win. (laughs) Is the win. Like, and that is really the point. Because then if you can do that, bam, you've got now 250 records that you can sell at your discretion. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's no deadline or financial deadline. Oh, you have to meet this by this. Otherwise, you're defaulting on your mortgage. And then this studio that you have has to move. And then, like, you know, keep your overheads almost at minus <laughs> you know what i mean if yeah. possible like yeah. you know it's like and and then you then that's then where you can sit back in the creative seat and be like oh how would we sell these because you're not worrying about selling them you're just trying to then develop the opportunity and practice yeah. of selling your shit For sure. you know and so then you know oh, okay i can set this price margin on it or i can set this price model on it or i can do this or we can make it a bundle we can do you know so yeah. Yeah, but it, it, at that point in time where the linear timeline we're on in the late two thousands, people were thinking about making money. People were signing big label deals. Labels were getting involved in the Aussie rap shit. Yeah. So that kind of mentality was there because other people had blown up and mm. people were showing you can do it. Yeah. So people were thinking that was the goal. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get on triple. Jay, I'm Triple gonna get J on and, Channel V. Yeah. Then I'm going to be doing Big Day Out. Yeah. Then I'm going to be doing here. Then mm-hmm. I'm going to be, which some people did do, but not a lot. Not a lot, and a it's lot. and it's a very, um, it's in some ways it's sad because like there's a lot of people who had false hopes. Great, not necessarily false hopes. They had great capacity for that, right. but unfortunately just didn't have the infrastructure behind it mm-hmm. to really support it. Yep. And support it also as realistically as, you know, it's like everything that you want to do is a risk, mm-hmm. you know, like the venues, like, you know, if you look at venue stuff, like if every time this genre of music or this group or this collective of people arrives at our venue someone gets hurt property gets damaged there's you know like basically like a fucking unbelievable lawsuit if come you come in there and like drug test any of the people in there like you know what i mean like it's like all of these things that are just like kind of like (laughs) bad news right and you decide that's my life career (laughs) you know what i mean like you are in the hole for life yeah right until someone sits back and goes like actually what if we just make sure that we have our own spaces to do this Mm -hmm. so all of those things that like uh the venues problems which then get heaped on us it's like if we say no 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 we're going to do it over here all the constituents of that will have a very different mindset to it because they're like, oh, no, 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 this is our place. Yep. This is where we can go. There is a wall where you could do graph all night. Yep. It adds to the value of the thing. Yeah, respectful, yeah, because it's like this is what we're trying to build together and we have to, you know, it's like don't come and, you know, kick a hole in the wall like you know it's like you know it's like come and you know come and drop your tag come you know put a nice hand style on it like add to the value add to the you know the cultural value of it where it's being ignored and unwanted over there don't come and fuck it up over here don't bring that energy into the space that's for us like you know and so 
again, like it's it's when when do you get to marry? You know, it's like great business with actual like cultural investment. Doesn't happen. It well. never happens, like unless it's someone in the culture who's making the investments because they know what it's needed for. Mm. And, and so yeah, but that, and generally those people would probably have money that they've got from somewhere else. From somewhere to then else, harness that, that culture. That's it. So we're so art is not necessarily a profitable thing. It's not, and it's not what that's not what it's supposed to do. Yeah. It's not supposed to do that. Yep. Sure, you can take an artist like a product of creativity, and add a price value to it and someone you could sucker somebody into paying something for it but at the end of the day even they aren't buying it for that Mm. no one but i didn't like no one on the planet like except someone who's reselling shit who buy shit to to know that they could sell it for this much yeah it's like you're buying it so that i can immerse myself in this world that like you know like alleviates all the pressures of money and like I'm you know I'm not attractive or like my ankle hurts or like rent's due and all of that you can just live in this world for an hour and be like wow there's something bigger something greater than all of us that we can share yeah. in this little plastic thing or now it's just you know like <laughs> whatever radio waves are just kind of you know like but unfortunately we've got to pay the bills at some stage and that's the thing like you know the the beauty of the art is like you know it's like it takes you away from that for the moment that you gaze at it you know it's just however long you look take to look at a picture and really appreciate like oh wow like you know there's like there are beautiful things in this world just for that minute or whatever and then be like all right back to the grind you know like so it's like now that that's in that's infused in that freedom you know it's like the Cultural, um, not cultural, but like financial pressure is infused in that freedom that we're trying. It's just like, nah, it's like it's. So the inevitable you know. only way to really make pure art is to make it and then find your revenue stream elsewhere. Essentially, for sure. You know, that's it's the only realistic way. Mm. You know, I think, and so. um, yeah, and it's like it, it's um. It's like so. What I was going to, what I was saying is like it's unfair that people get coached out of that line of thinking. With the dangle, you know, of yeah, money. with the dangle, yeah. You have your money, man. Have your money, but then it's just like, mm. well, that's it. Is say, that really? You can be your true artistic self, and you can be financially paid for it. Mm. The only time that that ever really works, I think, is when you've got an artist who's so big that they can do that on their own accord, mm. you know, and then then they become so big that the labels then bend over backwards for them. For them, yeah. You know, you look at someone like Tyler, the creator, he's kind of like forged his own way of doing things and mm. then the labels have to conform to what he does. Yeah. Something like along those lines. That doesn't happen very often. The reason why is because, again, of when something becomes financially viable, that's what people are looking at. So it's not a thing of, oh, this is culturally viable. So you, financially you it's financially viable. You know what I mean? Like, but you have to come from a certain culture to be able to harness that. You know, it's like, so Tyler, the creator, like, could have very easily been written off as a fucking, um, Flash in the as a gimmick. Yeah. Because exactly. that's what it, it's what it came across as at the beginning. Like, yeah. you know, it's just these but that's kids were far. Donuts and shit at the time. Yeah. You know, and so it's like, that's what, you know, um, would an 18 year old 17 18 year old would say like you know what i mean with the freedom of not having anyone oh no you shouldn't say that it's like fuck that i'm going to say whatever i want like you know and <laughs> say, like you, <laughs> you know yeah. and and then develop and be like no i've my whole point was why i wanted to make music this was this is where where he's arrived at now. This Chromacopia album that he made is fucking incredible. I to him, but yeah, it's incredible. But like you know now, what he's you yeah. know what he's able to speak to. Like you know it's just like and you know having his mom on the record. You know speaking about his fa- having his mother. You know telling him to forgive his father for not being there. And you know he's like it's like man, imagine yeah. So you see that growth, but that has to be 
like what I said before, like, you know, it has to be around people who culturally believe that this is the thing. And then also personally invested in knowing that you can grow. Yeah. You are, you are supposed to grow. You are supposed to have a developed understanding of what you're in and what you're about by the time you're 30 and not be like, oh, I, I got to quit rap now. It's like, no. Oh. These are the most potent bars you're going to hear in your life, like, you know, because it's like I'm giving you something that's lived in as opposed to something that's like kind of thrown. Yeah, like thrown, yeah these, you know, yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, and so, man, yeah, it's, um, I love these tangents and they're awesome. But we got to get back. <laughs> yeah, I know, we got to get back got, on to my you, shit. You, I know. you should come back another time where we can not talk about your story and we can just, yeah, talk, just about, talk about, about anything. music and yeah. shit, which would be awesome. But let's mm. get back on your journey. Yeah. So, all right, so late 2000s, you're recording, you found Pang, you start to collaborate with others, you know, where are you heading yep. from there, man? So then from there is, so like, I, like I get on these tangents because there were points that I was trying to make, but so <laughs> from there it was because, um, again, another thing clicked in my mind and I was like, so now I'll, I'll jump a bit and I'll go to end of 2006. Mm -hmm. um, what was it, end of 2006? No, end of 2005. So sitting with, you know, Matt and Must and I was just like, okay, cool. What I'm like, I, I see where, what this is about, where it's at, da, 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 da. I know where my skill gap and my knowledge gap is. It's like, I don't really actually know the inner workings and fundamentals of music business, mm -hmm. right? So it's just like in my, you know, got to look at the manual, like, cool. All right. So then I applied for music, um, it was music industry business, like as a, as a degree. So I now switched from doing IT stuff and I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to study music business. This is where I'm at. And this is kind of um, the pathway I'd like to go. I can see the marriage of the technology and the arts coming together anyway. So again, like dad's advice, like as long as you know how to use a computer, you'll always have a job. It's like, all right, cool. Bam. All the music is happening on the computer now. Bam. <laughs> you know, so it's like now it's just like, okay, how do we, what is the legals, like, you know, like the actual fundamentals of this thing. So then, um, yeah, so then 2006, uh, enrolled in the music industry business course. Uh, so it was actually music industry marketing was what the course was called before. And then it changed after a while. Um, and so, yeah. And then so kind of just studied that and was like, you know, kind of, like all right cool how do you how do you get royalties like you know it's like how do you not use samples one. yeah true or you know like sample and you know like kind of um give proper credit yeah. like but then also like i guess getting permission but then also realizing this just like oh, okay cool like you know people can deny you permission based on the content of your song like so it's like if you sample some christian band and it's a fucking super dope flip, but then it's like, she got double D's and sucking on my dick. Is that, those people will be like, fuck no. You are not doing anything with our music. Actually, just because you even suggested that, we're going to sue you. Because yeah. that's in their eyes, that's defamation. You're totally desecrating something that they made in good faith and, you know, goodwill. Like, and here you are, like, saying these things that, like, you know, it's like... I mean, there are good songs that are like, you know, classics and whatever, but even those people are kind of like, yeah, I don't know if I want to say that anymore. <laughs> like, you know, so it's like, there was another learning point as well. It's just like, oh, okay, don't commit to record something that you don't really believe. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, so um, even when like fast forwarding into the music that I started making and where I write from and still to this day, it's just like, what will, if in 20 years I hear myself saying that, would I really, would it still really resonate? No. Oh, don't say that's it. in the bin yeah, yeah yeah okay <laughs> maybe as a freestyle like if that's just come off the top of the head and whatever and just like but those are never really recorded anyway but so it's like yeah no so you're thinking from a mindset of someone who's in their 50s or 60s would i be proud of would i be content? proud of that content would i be proud of all the work that i did to get to that point just to be like whoa i can't believe i said that or then having that and then not even being or having a way of being able to then counter that within itself. You know, it's like maybe make a song that like, you know, it's a very maybe ignorant or undeveloped viewpoint, 
but then be able to then later on see that and be able to critique myself within myself and be like, yeah, cool. Like I recognize that. I understand why you were thinking that, but here's, let me unpack that. Having a conversation. And, you know, basically, yeah. yeah, having the music speak within itself and you, you're seeing the development, like, you know, and you can kind of, you know, like rationalize for yourself and, you know, be like, yeah, you know, I did say that, mm. but this is what I think of it now. And I can explain, I can, I understand that viewpoint better and now. Like, and it's because I've allowed Maturity. myself to grow and mature, like with my music and not be like, ah, oh, I was just a kid and whatever. It's like, yeah, but it's still you. You're going to throw yourself away and not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like appreciate the time that it took to get from there to where you are now. Like, yeah. why not? Why not give yourself the music that like, you know, it's like. But working you know, with the amount of artists that you've worked with, you get a chance to do that a lot though. Hmm. With like, you know, you're not just doing your solo sort of stuff. Yeah. You yeah. get to talk, you know. Yeah. Mm. And then also, that's also the other thing is where, you know, like, so sampling somebody like, you know, in terms of like what, what we were talking about while I was studying, you know, sampling is one thing. But then if you are now in a musical situation with musicians who are older than you or have a different viewpoint than you, where do you, where do you guys marry in the middle and actually agree to be like, yeah, this is a great song. This is, you know, it's like you have to be considerate of, you know, how does someone feel about cursing on record? So that's why I kind of, you know, try my best to stray away from using swear words in my music. Not that I don't want to swear, like, you know, but it's like it doesn't, it doesn't, in, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't, yeah. I can see where you're coming from. Hmm. A lot of those words have impact, but they, it's almost like an easy way to get get attention yeah you know it's like strong vocabulary and you're able to accentuate that in other ways in way other better ways than you know it's like not like the four-year-old that says fuck because it's like oh everyone everyone looks at me oh yeah well give me attention for that it's like oh no it's like you know kind of there's more allowing more nuance Mm. to your own product as a product of itself yeah you know as opposed to kind of trying to be this thing because that's what's popular now and then it's like as soon as everyone's like, nah, I'm not into that, then where are you at? Yeah, you <laughs> you know nowhere. what I mean? Like stuck nowhere because you in a place that you didn't really have to put yourself at all because yeah. it's like... For what? For what, yeah. 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 So late 2000s, recording more, collaborating more. Collaborating more was doing the um, studying and like, you know, really getting a grasp of, oh, okay, what's a door, what's a door deal with the venue? How does that read like? Okay, what's a, what's a merch deal? How does that read like? Um, what is a tour or booking agency doing for you if they put you on the books? Like, you know, it's like how much do you actually stand to make? Like, okay, what's the accounting of that? Like understanding, you know, it's like what are actual um, expenses that fall on the artist later on in the country because of the part of the contract that they didn't read or it's like the lawyer or the managers are oh, okay, no, 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 don't worry, we'll we'll take care of those things and you don't need to worry about it, just sign here. You know, it's just like all of those things so and you kind of realize like, yeah, exactly. Like and then and then not realizing that like this person is taking the fee for that and charging you for it. Mm-hmm. So they're basically getting double of that. Two you know what I mean? Cherry, Two yeah. bites of the cherry. And then also like put themselves in as executive producer of your thing. So they're getting, if it's like you're getting what, like a, a really, really, really like lucky artist would get 40 cents to a buck off of a record sale. That's being lucky. Like that's, you know, like in a, so if you think of like 40% of everything that you're getting that's super nice. So now imagine then your, your manager comes and they're taking 30%. So you kind of only have the 10. Mm. And then that's just like how it looks on paper. But then when it's like the actual, <laughs> the actual numbers that then come through, then the distribution fee kind of gets put on you and the packaging and manufacturing fee gets put on you. And so then that's you're not making any money at all. Like, you know, and then it's like, that's the problem is that most of these artists don't understand that because it wasn't explained before they signed the contract. They were just told, oh yeah, no, don't worry about that. We'll figure that out later. So you feel responsible and then it's to like, tell them that. Right. Yeah, so, and, but you have to know, like, you know what I mean? Like, and you have to be 
you know, it's like if it's just a whole bunch of artists who've never read into that and the whole focus is where it should be in the art. And then just the one guy that comes up smelling nice, you know, drives a fancy car and whatever, you know what I mean? Like, and, you know, so it's like, yeah, man, like, you know, it's like, I, I, you know, how do you think I got my money? And so they're like, oh, word. It's like, yeah, from juping happens- idiots like you. But does that ha- was that happening a lot in the Aussie hip hop scene? I get for a little bit it might have, but then surely the money wasn't there for these people to get taken for a ride, was it? Well, th- that's the thing, because it's not just, um, it wasn't just, uh, Aussie hip hop that when I'm studying this course it's not just like it's yeah. the, <laughs> these business case ideas that you have not they don't even thinking about rap music because rap music wasn't making any fucking money so they're this all the you know like major pop and yeah, you know okay. all of these case studies that we're you're privy to in multi million dollar cases like you know it's, yeah. it's just like oh fuck okay. <laughs> like you know what I mean and like that's what you wanted to get into and so it's like just to understand yeah. you know what I mean like so it's like if now here we are little small boutique label mm-hmm. you know print up 150 copies of a vinyl like you know then we know for real like what is the schematics of all of that yeah. what does each at the end of the day what does each record cost mm. you know and so it's like if it, is it then oh okay cool we're committing to building a catalog as opposed to, you know, having a flash sale. Yeah. All things clear. You're basically doing a clearance sale every time you're releasing a record. If you're having that mentality, it's just kind of like yeah. your your propensity to make throwaway music is way higher mm. than where you're trying to build it. You know, it's like I'm sitting from, you know, like when I really, if I have to jump again and like really say when I really started writing and compiling like worthwhile music that's from 2008 up until like the last thing I released was 2023 so mm-hmm. that's 15 years of like considered and steady like you know where then if it is now to talk about oh what are the revenue streams of being an artist is like performing your own music yeah. <laughs> in a perfect world do you know what I mean like and it's not really a perfect world. like record your own music like do that and maintain that you know what I mean? Like, and build that up. And eventually it's like, if you, if you trying to th- like, so think about if I record a 15 track mixtape and every track, every instrumental is a jack beat, mm-hmm. right? So already in a writer composer situation, that's 50, 50, right? And so, you know, where I said, like, you know, it's like, if you're lucky, you're lucky if you get 40 cents to a buck, like, cause already you're f- just by the, the, just the pure iteration alone, you're already 50, 50 with someone, if you didn't make the beat. So then now out of that 50, 50, if you're only really managing to get 40 because someone else wrote the hook or because someone else is, you know, like doing the verse or whatever, oh, like, quickly. you know, it's just <laughs> like you're down to 2% very quickly. But now the thing is, if you can do that for every project you've got, right? Writing from that 2% mentality. When you have 20 songs, you've got like, what's it? Two, you've got 40% of, you know what I mean? Like it's like of your, of your ownership stake in those 20 songs, right? So if you can then like map and you do 20 songs a year, Right? It's a lot of tracks. It's a lot of tracks, but then that's a lot of your own ownership. Yeah. Because then you're not relying, like, so me, as someone who writes my own lyrics or whatever, it's like, I'm not reliant on the music. Okay. I can easily take that, unhinge the lyrics from the songs, and then I can go and, like, I can do spoken word poetry gigs mm-hmm. for the rest of the year. And that's all mine. Is that a revenue stream? You know what I mean? Like, and an it's like. Thing, though? Well, it's both, really. Like, if I'm getting paid to be at perform at the thing, so I'm not relying on, oh, like, I need the band with me. Oh, it's just like, I'm yeah. cherry picking. I've got 400 songs that I can pick out. And if I'm only here for five minutes, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and so that's the thing. So people don't really kind of understand the infrastructure of what it is you're actually building. No. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, so you always have to kind of think of like even as a cd like the people who are burning the cds like they also have to get those cds from somewhere 
they're not making the CDs themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's coming from a manufacturing like, coming from thing. a manufacturing thing, and then it's like it's that trickle yeah. down. Like so, it's like again, it's like what did you actually make? You know, when you sit in that mentality, like two percent of the overall product is a hundred percent for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's like so if you get to do that at scale, you know what I mean? Like you're fine, like you know, because you will always have something that you can actually draw out of, as opposed to sign this contract, five-year deal, five-album contract. As soon as you cut out of that contract, you can't perform any of that music. Mm. Then, then what now? Then, you, then, you're <laughs> then you're what now? You can't even, you, if you did it on another beat or whatever, you could get sued for That's why, like, you know, there's so many disgruntled artists, a lot of, you know, it's like people who are, you know, it's like talking to themselves in, you know, like walking down the street and, you know, all of that shit like and because nobody told them that that's what is going on not even what could happen is what is going on you know from man we need to do an episode that's just (laughs) economics of the music (laughs) music industry industry. with one six but let like on your journey the 2010 the hilltop hoods initiative thing happens yeah that's huge yeah is it the first one the, that was the first one that went national. Okay. So before it was only in Adelaide or okay. South Australia that yeah. that was um, so only artists from there could enter. Yeah. Or listen, actually, it just apply for the grant. Essentially, that's what it was. It wasn't like it, it was kind of billed as like a competition kind of thing, but it was just you know it's like applying for a grant and you put in the best application and you know that's what you and you get the the ten grant. So yeah, so. So with that knowledge of all these things that I was saying, it's like to be able to apply it to that where it's just like, oh, okay, cool. Here's a, a, a stream of revenue. It's grants. And it's not necessarily revenue. It's just capital. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's like revenue is like that's profit. So that's like money that you, after you've done all the, you know, the pluses and minuses. And it's like, yeah, okay, you, this is your dividends, if you will. Whereas like, okay, we've got money for that. That's just capital, like you know, and then you're able to, you know, kind of cover the costs of what's this going to cost, how much is this, how do you this, put all da, that, da, 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 into, that. The, into the application? Yeah, and then, and then it becomes successful. And then it was a successful one, yeah. Luckily, but then also there's all these other things as well, like where it's just like, do people know who you are? Like you know, do the judges know who you are? Like you know, so these guys the are people. So, so 2020, I think it's always been the same people, up until. The last one, I'm not sure when the last one was, but um, so it was How, uh, Randy from Joint Adventures from Sydney, um, How, Randy Nish, the graph graffiti um, artist, and who was that? There was four. And, oh. Well, but you, oh, wow. it's, you, it's like, it. anyway. you get it. So, yeah, I get it. But then because that's like, I'm also, I know these people as well. Like, not that it was biased or whatever, but yeah. it's just like kind of like the application I put in and it's just like, this is your first iteration of ever being able to record. It's like I've put in a way stronger <laughs> application. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and so but that's they, what it was. But like, as well, like, And they, because then they also, they see it. You know what I mean? Like they're seeing, oh, this kid who's like, you know, it's like pretty much like, so the story that I'm telling you is like when I first landed in Australia, I knew two people. By 2007, I'm going on tour with, you know, like around the country. It's just like that for people to see that they're like, yo, this guy's, you know, he knows what he's doing. doing, Or it's like, if he doesn't know, he knows where to go and find out. Like, you know, so it's like that shows and, People see it, like, you know, it's not like in a bubble, thank goodness. But, yeah, and so people see it and they recognize it and, like, you know, just that kind of, like, oh, man, well, you know, this is, this would be a worthy recipient, maybe. And what, <laughs> and how, is that, like, 10 grand or what's the... It was 10 the, grand, yeah. So then you, and obviously we've established during the chat, you're very analytical <laughs> with all that sort of stuff and you know what to do. So you've got the 10K, it's 2010, and you're like, okay, I can put this project out exactly how I want to do it. Mm-hmm. Is that the mentality? Um, no, like it was more 
like, okay, I'm giving myself, I can give myself an opportunity to write a quality project and not stress about certain costs. So, so it's like it was like penning that project yet. Oh, little bits and pieces, but um, like in terms of once I got that, then it was kind of like, okay, cool. I've got the clear kind of, you know, concept wise, like, you know, still marrying the, you know, the computers and the, and the arts and all of that. So it's like, all right, cool. Concept, boom, like I basically just, because you had to submit songs with the application as well. So it's like I had like a, um, about five, five or six songs like that were on there. Yep. That was like, okay, yeah, these are strong. Like, you know, like add one more, call it an EP. Here's the, like, there's the 10 grand. Okay, cool. Like, I'll just print up a thousand copies of this thing that they basically got. That's so, cool. and they approved it. So it's like, oh, okay, well, like, I guess that's <laughs> in terms of that. Like, you know, I can yeah. kind of fast forward and, you know, not really fuck around with it too much. Just like get the mix to a level, burn them on, you know, like kind of print a thousand copies and then bam, I've got those as essentially like the business card or. You know, it's like if you want to charge, like I could charge you for them. You can take them for free. Essentially, it's just really about just getting the music out, yeah. right? <clears throat> 2010, and so, there's no Instagram, you know, YouTube isn't, well, it's a thing, but it's, it's not really a thing, play. but like it's not bad. really. And okay, well, by this time, like YouTube was really kind of thing uh, because um, there's also like, there's so many things, but like there's me and Discourse used to live together. And that was another kind of eye opening of like kind of like, oh shit, like you know, we that guy is DIY, like one thousand percent. Everything. Everything. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like and so being, you know, it's like kind of having that proximity to him and like seeing it was like there is no oh, I'm not sure. It's like find out. <laughs> find out like It'll you know what I mean like the, everything the design, design the whatever like you know the color grading this mm -hmm. everything like you know it's like and so that's why I feel like we're you know because I'm also this I need to know like yeah. you know and um so by this time like I'm seeing how the like the videos that he's doing with Fluent like this like by this by 2010 like you know like Henry's like really coming into his own and making incredible film clips like and so he's kind of on top of that he's got the um I guess the guinea pig he's got like fluent like you know who's making tracks and just you know it's like pretty charismatic looks good on video like you know what I mean like it's like bam let's go let's you know so mm -hmm. by that by 2010 like you know those guys were like doing ill clips like you know it's like really and very much I feel like at the forefront of um, a lot of uh, documentation of the scene, like in terms of music videos, like the, mm. they were like kind of spearheaded and then like were also include. And then like, you know, when the full clip stuff started happening where they're making clips for everybody and, you know, yeah. it's like even pulling dudes, like I think what Trem was talking about here is like, we weren't thinking about doing videos and then it's like, you know, pulled them in and made one of the most incredible fucking music videos ever, <laughs> like, yeah. you know? And so like, so th those are the things I'm like kind of adjacent to and kind of have proximity to like dudes who are kind of high focused like that. So it's like all of the kind of big, label or major label aspirations kind of was just very much like yeah. disappearing because it's just like why that's what they're saying that they can do for you it's like and you like, heard about it from the inside out i've already it. yeah learned it like from the inside like it's like small label yeah yeah so it's like fuck it like you know it's like build the team and then it's like the echoes of what um frank told me really early it's just like see what you what you want to find out about, get there, see who's around there and build with them and then expand and then grow and learn and, you know, develop. And, you know, it's like, and then eventually it's like you're kind of setting a standard almost, like, you know? And so, so that's like, you know, kind of tying into like once that by the time I've now got the, um, Hilltop Hoods grant is because it's like everyone knows. Like, oh yeah, no, he rocks with him. Like yeah, and so everyone's kind of like, oh shit, like you know, finally Aaron's gonna, you know, like, Aaron's gonna blow up. But even people but, outside of the hip hop scene, they know the hoods. 
Yeah. But then other people from music or people that aren't in music, they hear, oh, he's yeah. being oh, co-signed like, by Yeah, he's being co-signed Wolves. by these guys like, who are like, oh, yeah. you must be good then. Must you know, be, you know, prove so, it to us yeah, now. prove it now. Like, and um, so, yeah, so that was, um, it could have been a very daunting thing. Like, you know, like I, I feel like luckily I had all of this experience behind me. So the, by the time I got that, it was kind of like, oh, okay, cool. Like now it's just stick to the fucking script. Don't now switch and now all of a sudden, oh, yeah, I'm down with the hoods and you motherfuckers better respect me. It's like I had to almost dial right back in, you know, that fan guy. Like I had to dial all the way back into that guy and kind of really. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Is there any chat at that stage if you if you win that hoods grant? That then you're on golden era. Like, do they talk about that, or that doesn't? It's well, that was my first question because then I would have declined. I would have given them the cash back. Really? Because you just. So I was like, no, nah. I'm just paying. <laughs> right. Pang, that's the crew. That's what we're building. Whatever. Like, if like me getting that is distracting from there. Okay. Keep the cash. So if the Hilltop Hoods were like, here's ten thousand dollars, but you've got a sign. To us, which has probably at this stage would have taken over obese and probably been the biggest. Well, it was close to at the time. It was close, just getting there. I but think. But you would have said no, nah. no nah. loyalty. Yep, yeah. and because like by this time, like so now coming from the end of two thousand and five, coming to twenty ten, this is five years of already working with Pang, and then also. Going from that, like, I also wasn't just stuck with the, you know, because I, again, like, you know, wanting to learn, I got to, I got to learn. So it was like working on my stagecraft and then was like then working with more live bands and stuff. So I've also played with the public opinion mm -hmm. Afro Orchestra since 2008. And then even um, before that, I was in Ilzilla with Mantra. That was 2007 until 2009, I believe, like this when they kind of disbanded. Um, but then was playing with public opinion. So it was like, I'm still tapped in and like, you know, yeah. still doing the open mic things and rocking with um, uh, what's called beat science now. It's like Troy on drums from Cooking on Three Burners. Like, you know, so he'd always have like an open mic night playing with different musicians and stuff. So it's like, I'm still involved in, in all of that, like cutting my teeth, learning how to, you know, play with, um, I was also playing with, I was playing a lot of shit. I was playing with uh, <laughs> the Black Jesus experience as well. Like, so, so it's like, I'm like Ilzilla, pretty straight up hip hop band, Black Jesus experience, very like, you know, like a bit of leaning towards hip hop sometimes in the drums, but like mainly Ethiopian jazz kind of grooves. And then public opinion, which is all Afrobeat and like really jazzy stuff like that. So it's like, I'm getting all of this kind of on stage learning and then also still the opportunity to kind of follow on from this stuff that I'm learning I've learned from music business as a put like you know it's like oh okay being credited as a writer on a song can you know open, on the, yeah. open up other avenues and not just rapping over hip-hop beats like sure there's hip-hop aesthetic in terms of what I'm bringing to it but it's not just that so then it opens up lanes of where I'm playing it so by this time by 2010 it's like I've played Womad heaps of times, like I've pluck, played Blues Fest. I was gonna say Blues Fest, yeah. Yeah, Blues Fest, Womad, like, you know, going around, like we went on tour with The Herd and that's where I met Vida actually now looking at her. So this is like, you know, when, um, she, cause she was also in Ilzilla for a bit and then I was like kinda yep. in it. And then, cause she was working with Mr. Mr. Savona. So they were doing the whole reggae, um, his reggae production and like, yeah, she was like, yeah. They were the whole it. landscape had changed yeah. a lot since the early 2000s when it was very the the, the hip hop landscape was very people would say it's like the barbecue rap type scenario. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. it's a lot more diverse. By two, yeah, by yeah. 2010, it's like it's a whole different, you in know, every like different in every different direction. Like, yeah. yeah, and it's um yeah, and so you know, like venues like um venues like Section Eight are starting to now like you know kind of mm. get a you know decent following and they care about the culture, care about the culture. And, and so it's like yeah and so they really do a really great job of like kind of towing that line of like okay yeah cool like they are the, the commercial and financial needs that we need to cover but at the basis of it is you're you know like you're really going to get great music and a beautiful vibe and everyone who's in there with the 
respect and love of the music and everything that's happening there and just, you know, the community mm -hmm. as well. So, um, yeah, so there's a couple of places that have been able to successfully toe those lines. It's not many. It's like it's hard to do. Like, you know, it's like, um, but yeah, so like I'm kind of just having a lot of that kind of um, experience, like, you know, that other people kind of don't do, like, because it's like, it's not part of the business model. But like to me, it's just like, yo, but this is how, this is how we really, you know, this yeah. is how we do it, you know, or as, as far as I was concerned. So, um, so yeah, so now going into the grant, like, so got the 10 um, and then it was like, all right, cool. It's like made sure, like it took a while, like, you know, I was really having the, just like the question that you asked me, like, would you have signed or whatever? It's like, that wasn't even an option anyway. Like, it's not like they, yeah, were, they, were, yeah, they weren't like on it. But then I did say, I was like pretty much pretty early, like in the first conversations that I had with their manager. And I was just like, look, if this, does this mean that I have to kind of tie everything? I mean, it's like I'm intrinsically tied to him now forever just by <laughs> by that grant. But I was like, does that mean I have to, do I have to get a suffer beat on my shit? Do I have to, you know, like all of these things? Because it's like, I don't, I didn't want to have gotten to this point And then now all of a sudden it's like, slip into coattail riding from a distance because it's just like oh who's this guy yep. this new signee to the hilltop hoods is fucking blah, 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 you know all that shit i was like man fuck nah yeah. <laughs> all due respect but it's like a lot of other people would have thought you know, differently like, at that time I'd... and i think that's also what they what they kind of found um difficult with maintaining that thing is because people were not oh so am i going to be signed to the Hilltop Hoods now, do I, you no, know, you like, no, you get $10,000, yeah, go 10 grand to go and do your shit, like, you know, so, so once that was kind of cleared up, and it was like, oh, okay, cool, like, I, so I can, I don't even have to mention you guys, so, you know, it's like, no, 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 it's yours, man, go do your thing, and so I was like, I bet, um, and then, so, yeah, so, printed the thousand copies of that, the, basically, the EP that I sent in with the application, printed a thousand copies of that, and then, because now I'm also, on tour with public opinion or doing with like you know performing with us so it's like it's a cool way of yeah. kind of like because so i'm not thinking about I'm, distributing through like a distributor no uh, just hand to hand because i'm able to do that oh, okay this weekend i'm going to be in yeah. bellingen cool i'll just take 20 cds with me and then like just so there's 20 people or whoever many people out there that i wouldn't get to over here and there's also not anyone over here who would also get there. Like, you know, it's like essentially like bypassing all the shipping costs and delivery costs and <laughs> kind of, you know what I mean? Like it's logistics, like I'm on the plane, get there, have the CDs, give them out, keep it moving. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and so, yeah, so it was like a lot of those things like, you know, that I really got to firsthand experience like, oh, this is what it takes to be able to say like, oh yeah, I'm like I got distribution in all the major markets and da 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 and all of this. This shit is expensive. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, it and starts then, to change the way that people consume music as well. Yeah, that's right. Because now also, I've got these thousand copies of the seed of this disc, but then Bandcamp is also available. Like so, it's like oh yeah, people can listen to it online. Like there's the very few people who have like you know good music access on their phones like you know that was still also kind of the early before it really turned and switched mm. over like you know it was still very much like people had ipods and then your phone yeah you know yeah. what i mean like I it was iPhones like, around about that time -ish. yeah all the first iphones were probably around like kind of oh six oh seven and then but it was still your music is on your iP ipod yeah. You know, and so that um, once those kind of merged, I think that was probably what, 2012, 2013, when it was really had the, the functionality where you can just listen to, yeah. listen to the internet on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and the apps work and it's really kind of yeah. adapted that way. Um, so, yeah, so it was still kind of the beginnings of that where people would carve out time and sit and be like, no, nah, I'm going to listen to music today. And they would be on their, comp on their laptops or their computers and, really giving it time and then also the you can 
post links in Facebook so people can, you know, you could share stuff and they can directly access your stuff and Music you know it's like changed. it's like shh, yeah. out of there, you know? And so yeah, so it was lucky that like, you know, kinda all in the like changes of that, being able to adapt to that without um without really having lost too much like you know what i mean like or even in in a term a, a sense of momentum or anything if anything it really kind of mm -hmm. you know kind of i guess steepened the slope and it was whoa shit <laughs> you know what i mean like it kind of we used to be the drudge of you have to climb and get there and then like it kind of plateaued out where it's like oh okay you know my space yeah everyone has an opportunity to get the thing and then it just went like and um and it was great, and I like really had like the, such a um, a great time firsthand seeing or feeling that like you know where like people are kind of like looking at you like oh but oh he's so and so he he got that hilltop hoods grant and then meeting them in person and being they're like you're really down to earth like you know I, like what I thought of you and who you are like a very different like you know and it's like and just kind of being like oh okay. Because at that time, because, so, sorry, social media yeah. wasn't popular, like Facebook was, but Instagram wasn't there. There's no video. So people can't really see what they can only experience mm. you through the music. So they can only get that sort of idea of who, who you are. That's they it. Haven't, haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. And so because it's also like, you know, kind of more opportunities coming as a result of that. So I'm playing more shows and I'm kind of yeah. extending a bit further out as a solo artist. Whereas, but. Luckily, I've already got this experience from being in the bands. So it's like all of this isn't kind of like, oh, my God. Like, it's kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. I'm used to the interaction with the crowd and stuff. But now because, you know, wrapped with the, oh, like the biggest hip-hop group in the world think that you're the shit. Like, you know, so like, do you think you're the shit and whatever? And, you know, all of these kind of attitudes and stuff that like, it's all preconceived and then and it's like just because of my nature so it's easy to cut that bullshit away like because it's like yeah I'm just like, no i'm not like that nah. chill let's so, have a let's have a drink like, let's chill. <laughs> you know <laughs> like so so after that ep then you re you're going to do your first full length album the first full length yeah which 2012 2012 yeah and so that's that was um then now uh, my ability to kind of prove my my a and ness so it's like okay cool yes i can canvas or like pull together different artists you know like by this time i've got a you know fairly strong awareness of production and how to compile music and put it together and mixing it work and you know like doing all of that got enough of a rapport with all of my favorite artists that i can get them on these beats and stuff like that. So it's like when every time I look at it, like kind of again, fan mode, step back, even pulling myself out of the album, right? And I look at the first, first Australian rapper that I ever heard in my life, which was Mourns. I get to put him on a track with the first rapper that I'd ever really seen live, which was Mantra. Wow. And then boom, like this, what's the track? three or track two like on the album so it's like they're my f actual life experience of these are the first two australian mcs i've seen and heard ever and i haven't heard them together on a track before or since what a moment you get to do and so i get to do that so then so that's now outside of you know the first job i wanted was a and r i want to be able to put these you know put mourns and mantra on a must be and like I'm, then I'm choosing all the samples and the way it's cut, like all those samples that I chose and, you know, Musty's cutting them and it's like, just be like, boom. So for me, like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, I'm still representing for the homie like that at the start. It's like, I just want to go to a label and do A&R, like, you know, pick some of the dopest motherfuckers I've ever heard and put them on a track and walk into JB Hi-Fi and go buy that shit. So I was able to do that. Full you circle moments. Full circle moments, like all of that. Like, you know, then getting to work with Flu, like, um, you know, Flu, putting Flu and Raven, like, you know, it's like Crate Cartel, you know, like the homies, putting those guys on a must be. Because mm. right? Flu was one of the first people that sort of 
tried who's, to, yeah. Yeah, and who's one of the first people I'd met, like, at the underage battles, like, you know what I mean? Like, 2004, yeah. you know? Then, you know, it was like, all the other different things, like, you know, really weird, like, not weird, but, like, I guess serendipitous, like, I got Candice Monique on one of the songs, and it's like, you know, it's like kind of a love song or whatever, but then now it's like, that's she's you know she's my sister-in-law you know what I mean like it, so it's like the mother of like my niece you know and so like all these kind of you know, it was coming like, together full, like yeah it's just like things that like you know kind of were I was was able to compile because I just stuck to like <laughs> you know it's like you followed your heart follow the heart like you know what I mean like and then being able to have that as a full copy like you know the even Going further back, like um, the dude who did the artwork, I went to primary school with him in Namibia. Wow. So it's like really a pulling of all these really personal things that like, you know, like uh, my life experiences and like kind of putting it in into this package of, you know, like, so cool. you know, being able to do that. So, yeah, like, you know, in terms of being fulfilled as an artist and feeling like if that's the last one, then it's like, hey, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I did, did I pretty good. Yeah, the put my heart and soul and the, and the universe also just reciprocated. Like, you know, I felt like, you know, I wanted to put out good intent. Like, you know, there wasn't, there's nothing in that album or that project that's like about like, yeah, I'm the illest motherfucker. And da, 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 da. It's like, I just, it's kind of intrin intrinsically there because that's the aesthetic you should have as a as an MC. You should feel like you're the dopest motherfucker on the planet. Mm -hmm. But then the role, as I guess, really where it comes down to the humanity is that you have to live that yeah. for it to be true. Mm. You can't just yell it and then you're doing other shit and it's just like, <laughs> what are you so talking how, about? So how do you so, follow up something like that when you've put everything into it and it all has come together? How do you how do you move on as an artist or how do you grow from that record? Well, so the thing is like why uh, or like where I kind of stay thematically and it's like I always write a concept because it's like, you know, there's the opening, closing, wrapped up, done. You know, so I don't have to hold on to the fumes of that or hangover of that. It's like, no, that's all done. <laughs> that's all wrapped up there, bam, and then start brand new, you know? So it like, it doesn't, it's like, there is no follow up. It's just, I'm just <laughs> doing another one. That's finished. Yeah, it's this like, is the this thing. is the next thing. And then also, like, kind of working and, you know, writing for these other bands and doing all these other things and, you know, slowly developing. So it's like, I'm always kind of around something like you know, there's always this, a plate spinning so it's like it's never like fully dormant or it's like it's always like oh okay yeah cool like so and so had a whole bunch of beats that like you know it was like <clears throat> that might be the next project that might be the next project or like one. you know it's not this one but it may have been but then certain things maybe just didn't work and but then it's like it's still like yeah no nah, we you know that i'm still going to do something so exactly. it's like you know so everyone like it shouldn't have like oh man you, you didn't use my beat it's like don't worry it's coming <laughs> it's so coming yeah exactly yeah there. and then it's like you know just be ready for the day cuz i'm pretty impulsive as well it's like where the day i'll just be like yo what you doing all right cool i'm coming and then we'll like record six tracks in a day like you know what i mean and so yeah it's like it's never not something that like it will happen and we'll do it. And it's like, as long as you also kind of also married to the, oh, okay, it's not going to sell a thousand copies. You might not even get a thousand listens or whatever, but we, it's something that we're going to do with the, you know, with real integrity and heart and, you know, proper spirit in it. Like, you know, there's like financial motivations don't exactly. move my pen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Like they don't. So second project, or first project. So it, in yeah, essence, in, in essence, the second one. So Inbox was the first, first EP one. that I'd released, and then Electronic Mail um, is the first full length. Is the first full length, yeah. And then, um, so that's 2012. So then, so we're doing we're doing the Four Aces thing. So that was the group: me, Flu, uh, Matt, and Must. Yep. And so that was 2013, I believe that came out. And you're doing some and touring then, as and well. And then doing some touring. So went on the 
actually the, so after yeah after i released the um electronic mail i ended up getting asked to join the earth boy tour yeah so that was 2013 and that was another full moment like you know so it's like 20 2004 is when uh earth boy had released his solo album the um distant sense of random menace and like i love that album it's like such a great album so then now being invited on tour it's like you know just all these full circle moments Almost you know it's like pretty much yeah and um so it's like you know i'm kind of you know really enjoying the kind of the results of the work like you know that i've been putting in and um and not deviating and from what you wanted to do in that's any it capacity. In, at all at all like you know and so it's like that's really lucky, like, you know, in the in 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 um in hindsight, like, you know, really seeing like how lucky I was to, you know, be able to just you know, almost like with blinkers, but then the <laughs> the crazy thing is like I had blinkers on, but the blinkers were see through. What do you mean? You know what Elaborate. I mean? Like so it's just like I had like, you know, it's like kind of I have my, you know, it's like there's the tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like with the blinkers, but it's not like they're not obstructing me seeing everything else. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like they're, they're there purely to, to maintain the focus, but then I can look through and see and then be like, ah, oh, actually, let me, let me pause myself and have a look at that. And then again, like, you know, I can kind of oscillate between active participant and you know, just a passive observer mm -hmm. within my, you know, it's like within what I'm doing. So I can be focused on this, but I'm still aware of what's going on around me. So I'm not like, oh my God, what the, how did that happen? <laughs> you know, it's like mm -hmm. still there. And it's like, you know, do I want to tap in? I'll tap in, watch when I'm back on my shit, you know, just dive right back into that. And so, yeah, it was just like kind of a, uh, an aesthetic that just worked, <laughs> you know, and still works. And, you know, it's like yeah. I still... Um, still have that so um, yeah so but it's lucky like you know it's like not many people have that opportunity there are people who I know who are way more talented have invested way more and really dedicated a lot more time and you know lost a lot more like you know it's like mm. for way less reward or return or like you know kind of recognition for what they do and how active they for how long and active they've been so I never take for granted that, <laughs> you know, like that, that's something that I can have at my, you know, like at my discretion, like, you know, really based on what I want to do and not really have to, <laughs> you know, like make a compromise. And then the compromise is not even compromise when it's just um, removing the, um, when when the compromise brings it back to the original focus, that's not a compromise, right? Oh. <laughs> it's like it's just the kind of just the stabilizing it, you know. So that that's you know that's kind of the the opportunity to have that and have that experience and you know kind of see it through all the time. It, it's really um it's I'm 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 yeah so grateful for it. So so Earth Boy gets you on the tour. You're touring with other people as well. You've so, yeah. seen a lot. You, you've seen the country a lot. I'm guessing at this stage. Yeah, by that point, by this is 2013, 2014. Like, yeah, I've been like around the country a couple of times, and you know, have relationships with artists out in interstate. Like, um, really good friends with P. Smurf. Like, that's mm -hmm. like he's really, you know, like I met him during the times of uh, traveling with Ilzilla, and so that was kind of the, um, I guess the demographic, if you will. Like, you know, it's like uh, the fundamentals. Uh, reverse polarity, um, uh, rapper port, so all the big village, yep, the big village crew, like I, those are kind of pretty, you know, close homies. Like a, a lot of the elephant tracks, like we're not like super, super tight, but like mm. you know, I have fairly good rapport with those guys. And the um, whole elephant tracks thing, like I feel like obviously now it's come to an end, mm. but th when obese kind of fizzled out a bit they really carried the torch mm -hmm. as like that big label kind For of sure. big championing a lot of stuff yeah. that probably wasn't getting heard you know previously well i think if that like um why you would say something like that is because they're not based in victoria yeah so a it's bit like biased. in yeah that, and it's really because it's like um it's more about also the proximity and like that whole um aspect of building a community 
is very strong in what they were able to do. And still, like, you know, it's like the label's not functioning, but the community of artists and fans and supporters and, like, all, you know, like, going back to all the logistical and mm -hmm. fine tu fine print or fine details behind the scenes, like, you know, there's huge, mm. you know, like, um, community of, like, all these artists who are involved in at every aspect of the um, industry, if you will. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that, that was um, being able to, you know, kind of tap in and be, you know, adjacent <laughs> to those people and witnessing that and being part of the fold, you know, for the time that it was. It was like, it was a great experience again and then showed me that like what I was, you know, like our mission statement was, that's how you get to that point is by sticking with the same crew. Like, you know, it's like if you disband after a year, how are you going to have a 25-year legacy or career or like... Mm -hmm time of working at something like you know you, you don't you can't fast forward it you have to experience it yeah and, and it so puts, it shows you though when you've got these labels like that that were at the forefront when they can't stand the test of time it shows how tough it is you hmm. know, for independent and small that's ones. right yeah. yeah especially to to keep the ethos of what started it up like when that starts to shake and it's like you know it's like all right you just we, we got to pull over like <laughs> that that back wheel has been rattling and if we don't get off the fucking road we we might not make it off the road like you know so yeah you know to make that call like that make that judgment call like is you know testament to the duty of care like you know what i mean like it's like it's like we can't you know like can't fly a, a, like a plane like you know it's like it's like you can see there's a fucking storm coming up and you know that the wings won't be able to sustain that flight you got to call it man like mm -hmm. you know and really because it's for the betterment of anyone who then like if you now do something in that situation and then you end up out of pocket yeah. you know there's so many relationships that will get burnt out of that like you know it's just you know, it's, yeah you just got to be realistic and honest and yeah you know. and it kind of reinforces the theory that you don't want to grow too fast you grow too fast you build then you take too many people on then inevitably that the, the overheads become more it changes the way the whole thing works and i can start to see now that i'm a little bit older more mature personally why people don't want to grow their business too much because as you grow then the wheels can get shaky and then too many That's things it. happen so mm. to say to figure out where you sit and to stay there mm. which goes against what a lot of people start out and why they start doing business before that is the that's sort of like the balancing factor and that's the no doubt. the key you know mm, yeah and so it's like even like in that or any other one like you know where that kind of happens where it's just like oh shit like you know like our vertical reach has now exceeded like our actual support like you know it's like <laughs> you know you you <clears throat> to build up like you have to build equivalently down you know, to, to maintain the stability. But if your main, fo if your growth is purely from the foundation and upwards, but you don't build downwards from the foundation, then you're too top heavy, right? And so, the the amazing thing, then, uh, like I feel like, um, what that, uh, not to harp on on elephant tracks, I wasn't part of it at all. But like you know, but just you know, from the yeah. knowledge of what had happened, is that now like all of those artists who are on that label were taught like they were all fairly autonomous it's not like oh no this isn't coming out oh no it's like from what i understand is like you know people were really given the opportunity to make the albums that they wanted to make you know and really kind of invest and build in their communities that they were part of and wanted to grow and really establish and so whether the like it's unfortunate that the label like as a family and a thing that you work on you hate to see it going but it's not like any of those careers are now no. non-existent. You know what I mean? Like, itself. yeah, and it was like, and it really gave the opportunity to all of these artists to then go and build and build their own dynasties, and you know, and they very like B Wise, L Fresh, you know, like um, horror shows, yeah. amazing. You like, you know, and so it's like, and that was that was, you know, as far as I could tell, and from what like even my own little personal conversations with them here and there like that was the ethos and that's you know so th here they are sitting with the fruits of what the, all that work was you know what i mean like you know it's like the you know like the um 
the old tree will die, but all the fruits and the seeds that are now other trees and it's the forest now, you know, it's like it's the community that that's the um it's the inevitability <laughs> that's the the process of growth is like things you know born develop and die like yeah, you know it's like that's die. yeah where everything dies like you know so it's like as long as there's still the the legacy of that thing doesn't have to die in vain like it's like you know 25 years worth of memories that we all hold forever based on that work that they did so yeah it's like um it's cool it's cool because when something ends it doesn't end it it existed, it, yeah, and, and then other things are born from that. Yeah, that's right. Like you know, it's just the energy in that structure is disseminated and goes to be an energy in other, <laughs> other iterations. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be as large, mm -hmm. you know, just a small boutique, you know, thing that just sells, just like you know, just sells T-shirts with the album covers on the front. There's a, you know, like there's a whole, like there's hundreds of shirts that, you know what I mean? That's, that's a wardrobe. Like I would love to have that, you know what I mean? Like, and because, and so those are the things that can prevail from that. Like, you know, and so it's like, um, yeah, it's, it's. From 20, 2012. So you're, you're touring with Earth Boy, first album, first full length album mm -hmm. to come out. Then where are we going? So then, yeah, so then we do the Four Aces thing. So Four then Aces we en like went on tour with um, Nelson Dialect, Morns, uh, Be With and Dees. The Crate Cartel is really it's a like thing Like Crate now, Cartel, like, popular. yeah, and they, they'd been going for, like, since at least 2008, I should say. Like, yeah. so there was Raven, Fluent. Um, I, I'm pretty sure there was, like, a Hungry Humans EP that, or something that had kind of come out under... A crate cartel label thing there was geckos working on his stuff like um uh there was the goat mob mm -hmm. stuff the eight six stuff that was around that time as well 2012 2013 and then we're now doing the pang um pang crate cartel we're starting to like really kind of um work together. work together and then so the also the other album that came out from that time was the flu season album. So yeah. Fluence, like that album that he did with Musty, that was kind of the, all right, cool. Pang and Craig Cartel were like, you know, like cousins really. And yeah, and then it was just kind of just like, yo, let's just, we're just making really cool music. Like we're doing cool videos, like, you know, like the artworks look fresh. Like, you know, we're able to harness all these, you know, like think, oh, this would be a great idea. And then you've got discourse involved and it's just like, yep. We'll whip that up. Want to make a movie? Yep, we'll do that. Like, you know, <laughs> yep, yeah. we, we, we can do that. Even though it's and, a label, um, the DIY culture is there. Like, we'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, and if it's unrealistic, it won't happen, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, but then if you have someone who's as ambitious as Henry, it's like, there's nothing is impossible. <laughs> like, you yeah. know? And it's a great environment to be able to create in because it's like there are no obstacles. There's no hindrance because even if you don't know, you can look to the left or right and like, you know, that whole six degrees of separation, like whichever direction it is that you want to go, you have someone who has knowledge of that, mm. you know? And so and even if they, and don't, even know, if they, they don't know, you. they know this guy does. Mm -hmm. And there's the rapport with that guy where it's not like, you know, you're not coming in cold and being like, Oh man, like, would you be, they're like, yeah, man, sure. Or then by that point, it's just like, kind of like, Oh, actually I'd like to try and do something like this. Like let's work on this. And you just, you know, like I do a spoken word, video with someone who I just want to learn like okay what how do I sit in shot yeah, what frame we're framing way. yeah what is what does this look like what if I stand over there like what it, you know having that experience firsthand and learning how to do it but that thirst for knowledge then, is what what really starts it though isn't it that's like right. when you start yeah. to lose that thirst for knowledge you're not really creating anymore are you or you could be creating but you're just kind of using stale ingredients you know what I mean? Like, you know, you, you, yeah, <laughs> essentially, like, you know, it's like it's, someone's going to get sick. <laughs> those so, eggs, don't, yeah, need those eggs don't need to be in the mix, my G. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I know there's a, <laughs> there's a story called green eggs and ham. You're not supposed to eat that shit. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. And, you so know, the thirst so, for knowledge keeps it youthful, though. Yeah, man. And it's like because you're constantly learning and you're constantly realizing what you don't know. Okay. You know, and so that's what keeps things fresh because yeah. it's like um, you mentioned Henry a few times. Discourse, yeah. 
and you lived with him, but mm. then you collaborate with him a lot. Mm-hmm. And recently you've done it again, yeah. which is like the most recent release you've had is with him. Is with him, And yeah. that's got to be cool to, for you guys to just jump back in to like what you used to do as well. Yeah, it was, and it was a, a bit of, you know, years in the making. So we started it like the, yeah. So it was like the way we started with that project was, um, we'd, we'd kind of worked together on, uh, with the, uh, like, cause me and Gecko did a project, um, the Hemicrania project. And so this is when Henry was running Crate Cartel. So it's like, it was kind of us three working like together. 2014? Like so 2014, yeah. right? So that's when we recorded that, but it only came out 2016. Mm-hmm. But anyway, like I, again, I, 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 we made the thing, sweet. <laughs> Move on, like, you know, it's like, so I wasn't, I wasn't stressing that it wasn't going to come out. It was just a matter of, you know, realistically in the timeline of projects that they have. Are you someone who can make something and then not put it out, but then let people put it out later and you're still cool? Because I know a lot of of people I talk to, they'll say, I'm sitting on this record that such and such did 10 years ago Mm. and it will never come out because that person's moved on, you know? But I guess because of the way you make music and you're always, you're making it thinking, I always want to be proud of it. Mm. Someone can just put out something you made years ago because you're like, I made that with the mentality that I'll be proud of it Mm. then or now. That's it. And so there's a weird mentality. And I think it it developed because of the, um, the, uh, the urgency with which, music was getting made is because it, it, it started being able to respond to life in real time yep. and you could hear it in real time. Mm. Like, you know, so it's like technology a, got to that point, got to that point where it's just like, we're, you know, it's like <laughs> a couple minutes ago, I had a reaction to a real world event that like, had we recorded it, you would, it would have been like, what the fuck is going on? Like, you know, because it's so time relevant. So then like, you step back a little bit and you're just like, where did that come from? That makes no sense. Like, you know, so it's like in terms of my, like whether this music comes out 2016 or 2018 or 2020 or 2024 kind of doesn't matter because it's like the way that, or like, you know, my intent is that I want to be listening to this in 10 years anyway. So, yeah, I want it to be timeless. I don't want it to be kind of... And so the reason why a lot of people, um, not everyone, but I could say, like, you know, people who are stressing and sitting on... Like, yo, like, we could have done this, you know, five years ago or whatever is because now this person had those five years of looking back and being like, "Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I know you are, but I'm not. Mm. You know? And so it's like they've moved on as an artist. Or 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 maybe there were some things that were said, especially when it's like a production thing. It's like, oh man, like I got all these beats or whatever. It's like they're listening back to your lyrics and they're like, nah, that's not it, man. (laughs) I don't want my, I've got kids now. I don't want my kids to hear that shit. That happens. I don't want, you know, it does. You grow up and you're like, oof. Even, ah. yeah, even me, <laughs> I'm know. not an artist, a bit of a bullshit artist, but I'm not an artist, <laughs> right? But I'll like, I'll see, you know, everyone sees the Facebook memories or whatever, mm. and you're like, oh, I'll be mm. a dickhead then. But mm. now I've got kids, I probably wouldn't have sworn that much. Or yeah, yeah, shit, said those shit. things, yeah. Like, yeah. and so. Put it on a record. Yeah, and um, unfortunately, like, there's, you know, there's, there's a thing about considering what you're doing, like, mm. you know, and really giving it, thoughtful and careful consideration and of course like for me with like you know the history that I've been able to explain like you know it's like my shorthand of getting to a point quickly especially in terms of writing where it's already clipped and 16 bars it's just like you know like I'm writing kind of whole concepts to a sentence you know what I mean? Like, it's, I have to think, <laughs> you know, it's like I'm already thinking that I have to think about what I'm saying. Does it make sense? Will it be, you know, it's like, so if I'm saying, trying to make a timeless statement, the time of release doesn't matter. Whereas a lot of people, as I was saying, like the urgency where so they're writing very time specific music yeah. that if they don't release it now, has no it doesn't have any relevance or like it just sounds like it sounds outdated yes when it does come out and so 
That and no, that's very true, and it's with a lot of different content. What we're making right now is called evergreen content. People mm. can come and watch. Let's see Aaron's story. Doesn't yeah. matter when it is. Because when? this yeah. is his story up until twenty twenty four. Twenty four. Yeah. But that's if it. we make a reaction video to fucking the political mm. state of what's happening now, mm. that is irrelevant tomorrow. That's it. You know, and so, so you're always making evergreen music, or trying to. You know, and so where my opportunity to um, do the time relevant and very flash in the pan, spur of the moment things is where the open mics are happening and, you know, mm. being able, so that's where you it get to, you know, and may not be recorded. Be yeah. You had to be there to hear it and you, you won't hear it again because it was like, I was just speaking to the electricity in the room or the electricity of the vibe of the social conditions of that specific time, you know, but that's not now what I've add it oh i can add to the catalog like yeah man he knows how to freestyle he can rap about anything you know because that's there in the repertoire but it's not necessarily in the catalog you know mm. which is the difference you know it's like if i have a catalog or do i have files full of <laughs> or like you know hard drives full of music that like won't see the light of day it's mm. like there's nothing wrong with that but it's also but it's a waste of fucking time. <laughs> no, but it's also like Dill Thomas you having know, ten thousand like, beats up his sleeve. You're like, well, there, there. yeah. So that's the thing. That's the that's the um, that's the the repertoire, but not the catalog. Mm. Okay. See, there's there's those are two very different things. Yeah. Like you know, so it's like sure you can have a stockpile of Archive. imagine like so it's like if you. Like, I know I'm now pointing out a shot, but like, you know, it's like, but look, if I look, you count how many pages are in each of those books up there, right? Yeah. And then you go and get like printer copy paper. And you, you could stack the printer copy paper like in the same amount as just like, which one deserves more, um, which one deserves more praise and merit yeah. based on when there's, it's all just, it's all just a bunch of pages. Bunch of words. Yeah, this is ink on paper, like right, like you know. So it's just like if the nuance and the actual consideration is like what is on those bits of paper, then there's no difference between the blank copy paper and the actual printed book because it's just paper at the end of the day. Now someone can rip it, one of those pages out and put something on there, which would then make relevance to them. But then that doesn't mean that, like, now that's unimportant because they didn't get it out of a, <laughs> you know, they didn't sell it at, you know, uh, what's it, uh, what's the bookshop? Um, Reddings or whatever, like, you know, borders. in that, yeah, Borders and all that shit. Like, you know, it's like, it's at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it's like if, you, if you're making carefully curated, you know, art. pieces of art, you know what I mean? Like, which are like symbols of expression then that's the point yeah. and that's cattle then that changes like you know because if you have to that's just paid that's just paper on a shelf yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like where it's like no 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 but this one here this is a book that you know like you know totally transformed how people wear sneakers mm. you know what i mean like then is, is it just is it just pieces of paper or these fucking like sources and symbols of information and knowledge like you know but do these and things so, really exist because it, it's all exists out there whether or not you put it into whether it's documented thing, or not the that's the difference right yeah so it's like what is what so then is is it repertoire or is it catalog you see what I'm? You, yeah, it's I like get I'm, it, it's like it's, it's a deep. bit abstract, but it's no, like it's, you know, it's, it's like real. It, it's, it's real, real though, like because it's like you know, you can have like again, there's like a, the heaps of pieces of paper stacked up, or mm. you have like banks of wealth of knowledge. Mm. But see, yeah, and like, but not everything in print form, not everything that's recorded, is necessarily factual. See, and like you were talking about earlier, to fucking go right back to the start, textbooks and a lot of that stuff, that can just be bullshit. It's all bullshit, decided, right? That's it. So not every, yeah, it's, it's interesting. This is why I'd love you to come back and we can just talk <laughs> shit about all sorts of different stuff. I'm going on yeah. tangents now. Yeah. Uh, let's get back on your Yeah, let's, that let's is get it. back to it. But I, I do want to just ask you a quick question. Mm. What, uh, spiritually or like religion or what do you think of, like, what, how, what do you believe? Without getting too deep, where do you sit in that we'll sort of We'll be here all week. Which is um, <laughs> no, but I'm yeah. just curious because, yeah. Well, like, um, I was raised Catholic, 
So we had church. Every, like we went to, like my parents can, went to. Uh, can I yeah, just sorry. ask one question? Sorry. Yeah. I was going to ask, is that a sign, like from, from, is that almost a colonialism thing though? Um, Do you know what I mean? Y- yeah. Yes. And also, I guess, um, from where I was starting to get a bit of awareness around it and being like, oh, okay, nah, this is kind of, it is a spiritual uh, connection to something. Something, I think, is the cool thing. Yeah, so it's like, I, you know, the notion of God and all of that, like, you know, because it's like, I'm very curious. So it's like, you know, as I was saying, like the inner workings of things, like I'm fascinated with that. Like, so, you know, that kind of, um, at a scientific level, like all of that religion stuff doesn't make sense, right? No. But in terms of my life and how, like, you know, it's like where they, they like, when, once you start to kind of unpack things that you're told, like, you know, it's like you kind of realize. And so as a scientific um, basis, right, like there's this, like, energy never... Um, doesn't kind of you can't destroy energy it just transfers and like will either build in some places or be at latent forms in certain places and stuff like that and then you read the bible and it's like the spirit and this and kind of took and it's like and so it's like in my analytical kind of thing it's just like oh okay that's what the spirit is so now it's like trying to, you know, like the, where there's the religious, um, uh, what do you call it? Like the, the, the foundation of a religious kind of experience is to, you know, kind of connect to this energy that like, you know, it's like harnessed in a certain way, like, you know, like totally throws science out of the fucking window. Like, it does to an extent. You know sure. what I mean? Like certain things where it's like at a spiritual level, like, you know, where you see certain things happening that you're just like, holy shit. Yeah, like God is in the room now or the devil is in the room now. Like there's very, it's, you know, and so it's like that kind of. You still subscribe to that thought process though? No, because then now where I'm saying like, oh, okay, I can understand mm. what, you know, those words are meaning. So it's like, you know, you kind of have your like either pure um pure positive uh like what you uh, kind of energy that you know builds Mm -hmm. and then there's destructive energy yeah you know like and those polar opposites and you know like and so it's, it's all the science and stuff and then but then like in terms of the harnessing of the energy of the spirit you know, it's like, you know, understanding how that moves is like, you know, kind of by the power of your word. What you say, like, you know, it's just like, I rebuke you in the name of God. And, you know, like, whatever, it's almost like, whatever. And then lightning strikes. You know what I mean? Like, where, you know, like, you have people in a room who would be like, holy shit, how did you do that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and then, you know, kind of having that... um a kind of awareness of, you know, it's just like, yeah, the religion aspect is all the charade, it's all that bullshit. But then the underlying kind of knowledge and kind of, you know, it's like the, the, the guidelines and the stories of just like, yeah, be careful of the energy that you pro- bring and you cultivate and you, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, be very mindful of that because it's either you are building or you are taking away. Mm-hmm. You know, so they can put it just like it's the devil or it's God and da 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 da. Negative, positive, Negative, dark, positive, light. dark light, da, 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 all that shit. Like, you know, so it's like kind of having that as a framework and then applying it to your everyday life. It's like, so, so, and I understand. So, so, would you say you're religious or spiritual? I'm realistic. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the, the, um, the, set, the happy medium. Okay. Of the two, so you you're you know. open to it, but you're not hundred percent. It's yeah, it's just interesting. Yeah, I'm just realistic, like in terms of like I understand the merits of religious. You know, again, it's it's all just community. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's all just community, and we all just like you know, we all believe in one thing, 
and then the trickle down effect of how the effects of believing in that how it extends to one another mm. is kind of the the point of it but then now there's like oh this religion is better than this religion well, and, blah, 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 think, and then yeah. now people like and that's, it's just like and that's the crazy thing as someone yeah. who's so, myself personally uh, for lack of a better term uh, an atheist or just uh, i don't really have a religion mm. but i kind of believe in a greater power potentially mm-hmm. but i also think that it, a lot of religions and not all but a lot of them have a good framework of just be kind to other people mm. and don't be a dickhead. Yeah, I think that's that, it. That like, most you know, of, I believe that, yeah. in that sort of stuff. But when people start to post their religion against something else and we're better because of this, because of that, that, mm. that creates problems. Mm, of course. And, I, and I'm, I, I'm just kind of of that mindset that people with religion generally go all in too hard, which makes them then not as well-rounded as an individual. Mm. That's what I'm sort of seeing from an outsider. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting because you, a lo- I'm seeing a lot of people now who seem to be very s- focused on their religion, which I think becomes detrimental to them as, as people because they're letting that define them. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Like, it's just, uh, oops, it's just another, it's like an, a different version of like, um, like fandom, right? You know, it's like someone who, or a group of people who, hyper focused on this one aspect so that they have a basis of being right about something mm. right and a lot of the time the people the very people who they are like using as a template or as a like a guy or their north style like yeah it's like da 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 they don't realize that the reason that that person that they look up to in that capacity also has an understanding of the very opposite of what they, you know what I mean? Like what mm-hmm. they, they believe in this, but have studied an active knowledge and awareness of the exact opposite yeah. so that they can have a well-rounded understanding of things. But now the people who are following them are only focused on this thing yes. and not watching what they're looking at. For sure. And so that's now the problem. Like you see it yeah, all the so time. It's just like, oh man, like I didn't, I didn't say that. Yeah. Like, yeah, but like in this thing, it's just like, yeah, but you're removing the context of everything else. Yeah. So it's like, how are you going to really kind of come through, claim to be coming through with the facts if you're only speaking at two percent of the information? Like, yeah. <laughs> the fuck, get the fuck out of here, but man. It's like, just having that you know, narrow minded like, sense, sense because it's like people that come and say, I only listen to this kind of music. You're like the person that made that music. Is well versed in a lot of different, a lot kinds of different of things. Yeah, so exactly. For you to say you only listen to rap or you only listen to drill, like you, the, the people that made that music yeah. know about all sorts exactly. of music. Exactly, and give then you see that. see those artists in pictures together. It's like, oh, why are you why are you standing next to this motherfucker? He's fake. It's like they're a musician. Yeah, <laughs> we are musicians. We're That's artists, what you yeah. know us for. You don't know us. <laughs> You don't know that this is my cousin just because it's not in the... You know, it's like stupid shit. Like, it's like, yo, fuck. And so, yeah, so that's like religion and all of that. Like, that's... I kind of very early kind of noticed that shit and was just like, all right, yeah, let me just... Yeah. I happy think, medium of like, you know, being mindful of it, but like not really thrown by the gossip of it. Yeah. You know? I like the mentality. I spoke to somebody and they said that you can't talk shit about a religion until you... say, And we're just going to use, say, like you know, um, Catholicism for a minute. But you don't, you can't really talk shit on that religion until you've read the, the Bible or whatever mm. their piece of... of well, of not even just the is. vibe. No, it's also you have to be in the, what is the ritual and what's the actual process of being a Catholic. Yes. I can speak to it because I've been baptized, I've had communion, I've been confirmed, I've got, you know what I mean? Like I've been through all of those rituals and those steps and it's just like, okay, well, like... I've also seen other people come through these things and it never made them anything better, any better at such and such and such and this and this and this. So it's just like for me to use my attachment to this as basis of looking at somebody else and claiming to be better no. doesn't make sense. Not at all. So why would I do that? Yeah. <laughs> why would I do that? Like, sure, I can hold to the tenets because I, they're mine. I went through those steps. steps. And it's, yours I, you know, to and it's mine to, to take yeah, on and yeah, use right. wherever the fuck I want. Like, I'm allowed to do that. Mm. But what I'm not allowed to do is think that my life is more important than anybody else's life because I've gone through those steps. That's yes. bullshit. Yeah. That's absolute bullshit. I don't believe in that. No. 
at all. That makes you sense. know, so yeah. Like I'm um, putting this in my mental notes of other things to talk about when you come in. <laughs> yeah. Let's get back on your journey. But no, I just had to ask that because I felt yeah, yeah. like the, that the, it just sort of rolled into it, and mm. I wasn't really, I wasn't sure what you were going to say. But that, you yeah, know, yeah, super interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, let's get back on your journey. So then, uh, the, I don't even. Know where were we at? We where, were talking we at? about. Uh, talking about, okay, yes, yeah, so I was talking about, uh, Skeleton Coast, how we kind of, you know, I had to go 10 years back to come 10 years forward. And Henry, that's and, a um, real moment for Henry when he was on this show that he said that he did a lot of traveling and then he sort of thought as somebody who loves hip hop and after he went to New York, mm -hmm. he's like, I don't really know if I can talk on this sort of subject. I need to speak to someone else and kind of have a joint, uh, I don't want to talk on his behalf, but mm -hmm. he wanted, to, he wanted to collaborate with someone and you felt like you were the right person mm -hmm. for that next project. Yeah. And it was really a great, um, a great kind of reunion one, like where we was really split because we'd spent so much time together in our early years. Like, so we lived together 2005, 2006, actually, what was it? 2000? No, 2006. But then 2005, we were really hanging tight. Like I basically lived at his house. <laughs> like, you know, we're hanging out together all the time. And um, and this is like I, he never really mentioned it, but this is back when he was rapping. You, people don't, not many people know that he used to rap as well. I know, like, but yeah, not but yeah, like not many. Yeah. Um, because and so we had like a we were kind of rapping together. Like um, we had uh, Kilo from Out of War was DJing for us, so like we were living with Ash as well for for a little bit. And um, so yeah, so like kind of you know, spend a lot of time like doing that, and then we kind of. You know, not not that we grew apart, but like kind of grew into our disciplines. Like you know, so it's like he's busy doing videos and stuff like that. I don't really see him that much, or he's on tour and DJing for people. I don't really see him that much. I'm on tour rapping and playing shows with people, so we don't really do. But then when we do, it's like in the artistic realm, and we create like really dope pieces of art. Like you know, really a lot of the things that we've compiled and done together has just been like fuck, man. Like we did done some ill shit like you know um so then got to 2019 and i've gone through a whole bunch of personal stuff like got married got divorced and you know it's like another relationship and then was having my first child um and so this is end of 2019 and he just called me up one day and he was just like yo what are you doing like you know it's like i'm thinking we should probably work on a project or something and it's just like you know what that's, that's really funny because i'm actually i've been writing actually like you know so we should link up and like in our minds it was going to be like cool yeah just give me the beats excuse me give me the beat i'll write to it rap done give me another beat right right done done like you know so it was like fully like oh okay no nah, not not any really concept stuff well that was going into it that's how it was like so you always work in concept. no concept but i always end up writing in concept anyway so um but then like the process of this one was freer because it wasn't like it was just like let's just make music mm -hmm. so whatever the theme ends up being whatever fuck it <laughs> let's just go here's a beat write rap record boom next time we're starting a fresh new new beat whatever any four bars that I've got to start from there, right? Record, boom. And, you know, so just kind of Can doing it. that. Yeah. And um, so we were on a pretty good roll and then COVID hit. And like, boom. And this was like literally, we like, because the plan was to just do, do the, like basically the six tracks that we did end up having, but like do it before my, my son was born. And so that, from when we started, like, you know, it was kind of, we'd done the basic beginnings of what is now the EP. Like, so the first four tracks that we'd done, it was like, that was the basis. It was just like, next recording studio, I can come in and just clip the rest of those in one session. Like, you know, it's just like, oh, there's eight bars missing here. Da -da 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 -da. Recorded in, boom. Next track, what's the words missing here? Okay, 16 over here. All right. And, and then in like, place? A, and it is his place. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so it's just, you know, just kind of a, a a reunion in a way, like, you know, kind of touching base again and, you know, like kind of being friends, like, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, and not really, okay, sure, we're, it's, we're always kind of married, married by the virtue of being artists, but then also like, you know, really invested in each other's friends, like, you know, I really feel like he's, um, 
damn near my family. <laughs> like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I know his mom, I know his brothers, he knows my mom, he knows my brother, like, you know, it's like stated out, you know, it's like all of that, like yep. over the past 19 years of knowing each other. And so it was kind of almost like a tribute to that friendship, tribute to, you know, he'd finally let go of, you know, the boom bap strictly has to be sampled. And so he's learning composition now and he's kind of opening up to kind of the stuff that I've been doing with the live bands and all of that stuff. And I've been waiting for these guys to come on board. And it's like, oh, can you? <laughs> I've been telling you. Something. Can we? Yeah, I've been telling you. I've been in these bands for like nearly 20 years now. Like, you know, it's like, but it's, again, it's evolution, growth and evolution growth. and people need to grow and do that. And then, yeah. And so like in terms of him kind of getting to that stage, it was, we were the perfect couple in that regard because it's like, I have the capacity for that. And I also know how to incubate and wait. Like, you know what I mean? I know that good ideas don't come, you know, like in a flash, but then also being able to kind of shorthand and be like, yeah, we can write a track tonight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's play, I'll never hear the beat before. And then by two hours, we had quick sessions. Like I got two hours, man. All right, cool. Play the beat, bang. bang. Done. All right. See you next week. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Well, it seems like a good so, way to work if you both are on the same page. And we're on the same page. The shorthand is easier. He doesn't have to explain anything or whatever. It's just like we're just kind of talking to the point and, and developing and all the, you know, the conversations that we're having, I'm really turning into lyrics and kind of writing in writing them into the songs. And so it's like, it's nice. It's, you know, that thing of like what I was saying before, like, you know, you record something and then homie revisits it and it's like, ah, yeah, nah, I'm not feeling that. It's like, we didn't, we didn't suffer that because we were building this together. Like the, the conversations were, that was, it was natural. Yeah. It was natural and it was infusing the music and then, it gave him something to work towards as well because then he has his own responses to the conversation and you know it was like this really nice collaboration and when um, you get to eventually put that out it must be good to be like this came out in a natural way that we we like to do it yeah and then you get and then you put on your was it at the croxton when you did the, the album launch was North, at northcote social social club yeah which was a fucking amazing show we've got we've recorded it we've got footage of it um that we haven't put out yet just because we were trying to you know and life you know like he had a, he had a baby you know just that kind of stuff and i was especially when he was once they had the child i was just like i totally backed off i was just like i'm not gonna ask you to do anything with music i was like i need you to totally invest in that and he went Enjoy. overseas from yeah, six and they weeks went or yeah, something. went overseas, and you know, it's like I, but I was really for him. I was like, no, nah, I want you to take in these moments and really enjoy the, you know, it's like your early blossomings of what your fatherhood, and you know, it's like because yeah. it's like you don't get those back. Yeah. You're not gonna have like a a hindsight conversation with the homegirls like, oh, I remember when you were six months. It was like, no, motherfucker. It was like, oh, no, no, nah, I, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Aaron was on my case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I didn't want to be, No. I didn't want to pull away from that because I know how important it is. Like, For you sure. know, and because like. Because you're a father already. Yeah. And then, you know, like in a weird way, the luck of when we had our first child was like, you know, really beginning of the pandemic. So like what we wanted to have, like, ah, uh, we just want time to be in our baby bubble and whatever. It's like we had no choice. <laughs> you couldn't fucking go anywhere. <laughs> so we had this great time of just being, you know, just like really in and like seeing these moments of like, oh, he said his first word. And, you know, because those things go like that. Like even the times when I, when if once we started loosening the restrictions a bit, like, and I could go visit Henry and stuff, those two hours that I was away, when I come back, the kids are totally different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just totally learned something in the time that I was gone and it's just like, oh fuck. Like now imagine you're gone weeks at a time or you're you're there, but I'm I'm focused on this and you're just missing out on something that like we can edit. Family's the most yeah, we can edit a video whenever. When are you gonna have like you can't de age your baby to go back to six months so that you can experience say your first that. Words like again. say your first words again. You know, you have to be really present in that. So um yeah, so I, I like I feel like that's again, it's those things of like you know where like how like um my approach to the industry and the business of this is like all of those things aren't considered you know you have women on tour pregnant 
the fuck? No. Like, yeah, sure. It's like, you know. But if that's what you want to do, was, that's But what you then what, if it's like, if it's a thing of want to do or you have to do because how are you going to support this baby? That's different. You know yes. what I mean? Like, that's different. And if you're not in a business or in like in a workspace that's being like, no, <laughs> we don't want to see you for at least another two years. You're, you're cool. Like, you're not, you haven't lost your job. Like, you work on your craft whenever you get the pockets of space and you do that, but we don't want to see you until, you know, that yeah. child is walking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that's, that's capacity. That's really investing in life. And, you know, it's like the business model doesn't work like that. No. And that's so, probably one thing that we've got out of COVID that is the, the one positive thing is that people that? started to take stock and realize that family and spending time mm. with your family is more important it's than paramount. some sort of business or working That's with some it. other dickhead that you're just a number two. It's just a number two. And the great, like, you know, the thing was that it was a reset for everybody. Mm. It wasn't like just kind of like, oh, there's a blackout in Dramana. Yeah. And the people are partying, playing mad loud music in fucking Fitzroy and shit. You, you don't give a fuck. You like, say you know, that though, so. right? But us as Melburnians and people here in Melbourne really copped it more than everyone else. We're not going to get into the ins and outs of COVID, but we did. We we either suffered or we experienced it a lot more than other people did. But like it what but it was still a global thing. For sure. Yeah. You but know, and everyone like, did, you know, yeah. kind of got snapped into the same reality. It wasn't it there was no spectrum of it. It was very much, much this is it. Like, yeah. you know, so um yeah, so the you know these business models and these work work life balances you know become paramount and all of these yeah, things you know people care, know, about, people care about it now and you know really invest all oh, I mean we did and now it's just like all that Watch shit's off. out the fucking window anyway. anyway. But um but anyway it was a, it was a time in life that we got to experience and I'm I'm so grateful again like in my lucky my lucky life that I get to um take in all of these experiences harness them put them in a creative capacity and give them out to the world and yeah. you know get to my kids get to see that like you know and all of these things so and that's because yeah. of the way that you've made music and made your art that you you're always going to be proud to show it to your kids because you've made it with that mindset. with that mindset like you know it's like for them to be like who is my dad like even if it's not necessarily the full overview at least in terms of the intent behind it that's there. Like, you know, the product itself is there. Like, whether I'm talking about some super outlandish shit or if I'm, <laughs> you know, being very mindful and still, you know, it's like it's all there and hopefully they can... a mature way of looking at it, definitely. Yeah, and so, you know, I try. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, we're going to have to look at wrapping it up soon. No doubt, man. This We've is going to be the longest episode and we're going to break <laughs> it up into two parts. But let's talk about <laughs> the Legends show that's coming up. Yeah, man. man. Do you want to talk a little oh, bit yeah, about no that? Oh, yeah, no doubt, man. Um, yeah, it's such a, you know, again, like going into my, you know, like uh, tapping into how I participate with the game, like how I play the game, you know, it's like I've been able to be surrounded by a lot of people who have very much the same intent as mine and like, you know, same kind of mindset and really being about like, it's about the music, mm -hmm. you know, and really engaging with the community of, of artists, right? Like, so we have the wonderful Vida Sunshine and the 11, Vida Sunshine who I met the first time I ever went on tour, this is 2007, you awesome. know what I mean? Like, so like, you know, she was just like, took me under her wing and really kind of, you know, like just made it a such a, a, a wonderful experience for me that like, you know, I was just like, it was a reminder of like, be like that, you know, like be like that. Like, you know, don't have an attitude. Oh yeah, I'm on tour. I'm on tour. It's like, no man, like, yo. This is a community I'm getting to really meet other artists. It's like, I'm not the best one or we're not the best ones because we're higher up on the bill. Like, no, we're all here together. Like, mm -hmm. let's, you know, really engage one another and be proud of each other. And, you know, it's so like, and, you know, really be open so that we can build and get to these, you know, legendary statuses, you know. So, Vida, like, you know, it's amazing that she's headlining the bill, like, you know, finally doing, <laughs> doing the headline. But, um, yeah, so she's on the bill. I'm, like, you know, very personally excited to you know see her smash the stage and we've got seven six and elder call like again you know like seven six like you know, used to have stronghold studios like that's where many 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 a rapper like you know cut their teeth did their first recording sessions and stuff out there like you know like 
pretty sure Briggs was first recordings and he stuff like his early like, stuff, yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like was all from there. And so again, it's like that community minded, like, you know, doing something for everyone, not like I'm the best. And, you know, it's like everyone gets a chance to have a shot at, you know, being um, recognized as one of the people who participate. So 7-6, Eloko, again, like, you know, great mentor for many young people coming into rap, getting into fitness, getting into, you know, like just... just in life. Yeah, just in life positive and really dude. positive dude, like, you know, really on some... Um, with intent, not like fake positivity and da da da. That's why I was very, I was very surprised to hear that thing that he said about being jealous. Like you know, he said, or what was he like in the Did conversation that? that you had? Like, I don't know. It was something like where he's, oh man, like I'm, you know, it's like a, maybe that was hunger like, coming out. But, yeah, yeah, you know, but like, and I was just like, oh wow, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel like that from you. But then it's, you know, it's again, a, you know, a level human. of. Yeah, as a human being, man, we're all like prone to that. But he, it is something that he d very expressively doesn't do. So it's very surprising to hear that that's like kind of the, you know, there's like always some underlying thing. You know, there's someone I have to work hard to not show that, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Um, but but he works very, and yeah, and he yeah. works that very well. So yeah, um, yeah. So seven six Elicor, um, fucking legend, Shem one. Jace Beatheads, you know, getting like, so it's like getting his time to shine, like, you know, kind of the backbone of so many classic, 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 classic records and classic moments in Australian history. And then not only on the music front, but like as an artist, like, you know, so, you know, tapping into my love of, you know, like art and, you know, graph and all of that and being able to you know, when I was working at Obese for a little bit, like being able to sit next to, like I'm sitting next to fucking one of the greatest graffiti writers on the planet, you know, and he's just mad humble, mm -hmm. very much about, again, the community thing, like, you know, just like culture and really, you know, it's like, yeah, sure, it's his name, but he's like not, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's really, it's almost all of our names, whatever he writes, like, because he writes it for... Well, the culture, like, you know, yeah. looks dope. Who is that? It's supposed to be anonymous, so but it's, you know, anyway. Um, so Shem got my man Strictly DT. You know, like he was based in Perth for a while, like, so, but he moved Originally over. Originally from Seattle, I think. Yeah, from Seattle as well. You've got like, people so from like, all different cultural backgrounds. It's a diverse sort it's of... It's diverse, diverse UK. crowd, like UK... Um, so Gun what, like... Vida's Ghanaian. Vida Ghanaian, yeah. yeah. Um, Jace is... Um, I hope he doesn't mind me throwing this out. But anyway, it's like, you know, he's, he's of Mauritian background as well. Like, so um, myself from Namibia, uh, Strictly DT, we've got Mishap and DJ Relic coming all the way from Australia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and even that, and um, Hungarian descent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, yeah, I forgot very to. Multicultural. Yeah. Very multicultural. Very, very multicultural, man. Intended, like, you know, we've got yes. Shining Armor from South Africa yeah. who's hosting, you know, um, Got my brother, second thought, he's going to be rocking with me. We're going to get him, like, you know, he's going to bring out the Willie Dynamo character. You'll spit some bars, like, you know, so it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a great show. There's also a special guest that I, like, I almost let slip out, but I'll, like, you know, I'll leave you it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's a special guest that, a uh, special surprise guest that will, um, you know, yeah. will, will be super dope. Can't wait till we announce that. So tell people how they call um, tickets for that or what they want to So do. if you head to Breaking <laughs> bread.com breakingbreadproductions.com sorry I like uh, I already got tickets so I'm not sure <laughs> uh, breakingbreadproductions.com like that and then there's also the Instagram breaking bread break b r e a k n b r e a d you know breaking bread it's break and bread um yeah like so that's the the, the early bird, the early bird tickets are gone, so gone. I think you're I think paying full. You're paying full price now, like you know. It's like well, this you, one's gonna come. This will come out in a couple of days, man. And by this stage, I think they might almost be gone. But they can try anyway. Yeah, give it a try. Um, but still, you know, whether you get them online, if you can make it to the door, like if they. There may still be a couple on the door for some maybe. lucky people. We if you if you smell nice, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be out there doing a sniff test? Like, huh? Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, well, like uh, apparently that's how people screen you now. It's uh -huh. like you know, so. How you smell? But besides no, joking, the breaking know. bread stuff, man, is there anything else you want to tell us about that's coming out for you in twenty twenty four, which is um, much left or twenty twenty five? 2025. I'm like I have this concept album that I've been writing 
pretty much. So I, even though I did talk about like not having necessarily a follow up to electronic mail, like I feel like this one is kind of a a continuation okay. and a maturation of the the idea itself because um yeah, like I I kind of went back into the IT study and like you know kind of getting more across the computer science and because you know that's kind of just the world where we're living at the moment so yeah. it's like kind of got a lot more first-hand information regarding and experience regarding that like so it's like you know, it's like oh okay yeah i feel the concept coming up and yeah so that's kind of started solidifying just in the writing just stages in the writing stages no yeah, yeah so no producers no nothing yet so but it's just like, i guess just putting that out Watch there for you know it's like yeah you know it's like maybe 2026 but like you know just for you know in terms of that's the aspiration now is like to kind of get back on the back on the um the the creative vibes and you know like knowing how to do it now and like you know i've got like i you know i have my kids i really want them to be involved in that as well so it's like cool. you know kind of um yeah just you know like i've got an npc and they're interested in that so you know like little if they have any musical ideas or things like you know it's like hey we're sampling in house like <laughs> you know what i mean so um so yeah so that's yeah just more growth more knowledge chasing you know um awesome. and then yeah just um hopefully just hope that everyone you know kind of can be in in good spaces going forward with you know the information that may be due to come out um yeah it's just get back to taking care of one another each one teach one no child left behind you know what i mean that should be uh we should get it tattooed on us yeah. <laughs> on our necks <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. you know just so that we can rem we we have to remember that because it's like we're slowly 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 building a world that has no care for that anymore and we we are the ones we are the architects so we should remember you know we should we create our yeah, own reality that's it you know and so we should you know keep keep integrity in the blueprint you know that's that's what we should start you know focusing on now so yeah so that's going to be hopefully my focus for 2025 man it's been quite it's been a epic. chat <laughs> and we haven't finished yet but we're going to wrap it up for this no it's been a massive two part of the longest episode we've ever had wow one six thanks for coming in man no doubt I'd love man. you to come back again but it's yeah. been an awesome chat so far for sure man thank you so much for giving me your time well done on this amazing platform like i can't wait to see the the further iterations and you know the mobile and you know everything like um yeah no it's thank you so much i'm i'm grateful thanks thanks man cheers peace peace three thousand